Amen. God bless you, family. God, welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. We're here for another day to get together on this morning, on this day. It's a new day, so it's a brand new day. So if you hear any background noises, I have a bunch of guys putting in a new air conditioning and heating system. All glory to God that we could do that, right? We're blessed to have that done. Um, so there might be some background noise because we have some workers on the facilities, right, on the premises doing their work and hopefully they do a great job so we can give them a great review. Amen. So God bless you. My name is Brother Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock, and you're watching The Morning Devo. I try to do these Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm a night owl, so this is early for me. It's probably like halfway past the day for you. Um, I heard some people waking up 4 30 in the morning, and they said that's a normal for them. They're morning people. I'm a night owl, so I'm not a morning person. But oh, glory to God, I love to get together with you in the first thing, top of the day, to get into the Word. A quick word, a quick devotional to get into the Word of God. So we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 5. And we're going to talk about deep, dark secrets. Deep, dark secrets. You know you have some. I have some. But um, to be honest, none of them are deep, dark secrets when it comes to the Lord. What might be some motives hidden behind our judgments? Because when we have deep, dark secrets, right, it might be judgmental type of things. Like we're judging people for what they're doing, for what they did to us or what they're doing to other people. But yet we have deep, dark secrets hidden, not from God, but hidden from other people. Amen. And what might those secrets be? Are you willing to be honest and tell me your dark, deep, dark secrets? Listen, I'm not asking for you to share any of the deep, dark secrets. I just want to see what the word has to say about deepest, darkest secrets. Does the Lord see them? How does he deal with them? Are we supposed to judge others based on what we see them doing? Or they're supposed to judge us based on what they see us doing? Or if somebody gets some dirt on you or dirt on me? I learned a long time ago that if we start throwing dirt at one another, we're going to lose the ground that we're standing on. Right? You throw dirt at me, I throw dirt at you, we're going to lose ground, the ground that we're standing on. We're going to sink in it. So that, that, that puts the love factor, right, above all things. Because if we love one another like Christ said to love one another, then this world will know that we belong to him. And we're not rocking out the way this world rocks out. We're rocking out the way the word of God wants us to. And we need to unite. We need to come together. We need to love one another as Christ loved the church. Right? What greater love is this that a man lay his life down for a friend? That a person will lay his life down or her life down for a friend. There's no greater love than that. And we've seen that love demonstrated over 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. Right? On the cross. With Jesus on that cross. He laid down his life, by the way. No one took his life away. I keep on hearing people saying, oh, they murdered Jesus. No one murdered Jesus. No one murdered God. He laid down his life for us. It was a, He was on a mission of love. Amen. A rescue mission to save us. So what we're going to do now, right now, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, please don't hesitate to leave them on the live chat. So I told my podcast listeners um, that were with me last night for our day one of our five-day free course slash webinar share your faith amen i'm gonna put that banner up in a couple of minutes listen go there sign up and we're having a good time day one was a little rocky because you know it's my first day on the new platform amen live dot is with a z dot org but you need to go over there sign up there's replays from now until 9 p.m that's right from now to 9 p.m replays of what you might have missed um, last night and it's an interesting Topic Day one is very interesting. I'm just breaking the ground of why Christians are afraid to share Jesus. Can you imagine that? Christians are afraid to share Jesus. Isn't Jesus the God of the Christians? So why would we be ashamed or afraid to share his gospel? I'm not afraid anymore. I used to be afraid when I first got saved. It's because I was handling it. I was handling the message of God wrong. I was in people's face saying, you better change or you're going to go to hell. I was one of those type of guys, like real religious, real um, rigid, real like just out in your face without love. And that's not cool. It doesn't work, by the way. Um, and it's not ever going to work. I have never seen uh, fire and brimstone preaching out in the street telling everybody they're going to hell. I have yet to see that be effective. Now, I could be wrong. I'm not looking at all the preachers all around the world, all the times that preach that way out in the streets. But I'm just saying, I've personally never seen it be effective. Maybe it is. 
Um, maybe not. I don't know. Amen. So let's pray and we'll take 60 seconds, a minute to share this with as many people as we can that comes to our mind, comes to our heart. And if you know somebody right now that's not on the grid, that's not in the matrix, that's not on social media, send them right to the website, soulwinnerswithaz.org. And right there on the homepage, I designed that to be distraction free and they could watch or they could listen from right there on the homepage and they don't have to be on social media so they don't have to deal with any alerts, pop-ups, spam or anything like that. They could be on their own, just looking, hanging out with me and hanging out with you and getting this word, getting this morning Devo into their system. Amen. So it could clean everything that's out, that that needs to be cleaned, clean it all out. Right. So today, deep, dark secrets on the morning Devo, what might be some motives hidden behind our judgment. So Father, I thank you, Lord God, that there is no, absolutely no weapon that's forged against us that can prosper or shall prosper because you are our protector, our guider, our guard, our guard in the rear, our guard in the front, and you are God, G-O-D, and you are almighty, all-powerful, able to do what your word says over our lives. I pray a hedge of protection over me and my family, everyone that's working right now in this outside the studio, them, their families as well, Lord God, prosper their company, their business, and prosper everyone that's connected right now in Jesus' name. I pray for every single family member of my family from the very youngest to the very oldest and everyone in between and also for the families that are connected right now on this morning Devo, whether they're live with us now or they're going to come and watch the replay. I pray, Lord God, a hedge of protection over all of us. I pray, Lord God, for our queen angels, ministering angels, warring angels to war against the demonic influence that's trying to take us down, that's trying to distract us. And Lord God, help us not to make false judgments and unwise judgments on people that we don't even know their motives. Father God, you are the judge of our motives. You are the judge who sees every dark secret and you bring it all to light according to your word in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 5. So I thank you for this time. I thank you for this time that you have given us together, Lord God, and I pray that you would speak to us and speak through me, your vessel, to, so that way we know that your word is what's being said and what's being heard. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's take a minute to share this out when we come back, we're going to dive right into 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 5. I'll be right back. And we're back. Let's go into it. First Corinthians chapter four, verse five. So don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time. See how that reads? Ahead of time. Before the Lord returns. So wait a minute. So I'm not supposed to make judgment about anyone ahead of time before the Lord comes. Listen to this. For he, God himself, the Lord, will bring out, will bring our darkest hour I think Apostle Paul is talking to the church. For he, God, Jesus, will bring our darkest secrets to light and will reveal our private motives. Some of my private motives need to get out. Father God, help me. My private motives are not the greatest motives in the world. Amen. We need to get that out. Then God will give us, give to each one whatever praise is due. Whatever praise is due. And the opposite probably applies, right? If you do not do praise, you're not going to get the praise. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. I'll read it again. So don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns. For he will bring our darkest secrets to light and will reveal our private motives. That's a promise. That's a decree. That's a declaration. And that is what's going to happen. Then God will give to each one whatever praise is due. So I know you see people out there hiding some stuff and it probably bothers you. I know it bothers me. 
uh, bothers me when I'm trying to hide some stuff, right? Knowing very well that God knows all my motives, all my deeds. He sees what I do in the secret. He sees what I'm doing in public. Amen. So I can't hide anything from God. You ever get these thoughts that pop out of nowhere seemingly and you'd be like, um, yeah, I want to do something crazy. And you'd be like, where are those thoughts coming from? Well, those thoughts are not coming from the spirit of God. They're coming from the spirit of this world, the spirit of the age. That's why it's very important what we watch. Watch what we watch and be careful what we listen to. Pastor Michael, God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Diva. My bro, my friend, my beautiful life, my life and wife says morning blessings to everyone here on the Morning Devo. So according to 1 Corinthians 4 and 5, if we're not to make judgments then what are we to do? Just let everything fly by the wayside? Just let everything go? I don't think so. I think we're supposed to wait on the Lord before we judge before the time. Didn't it say, so don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time. Because you don't know what the motives of that person is. You don't know what the hidden dark secrets are. You don't know what they are. Now, if they reveal it to you, they share with you, and they allow you into their lives to make a judgment over their motive, then they're, they're allowing you to do that. But if you're not allowed to do that, uh, I would just stay away, ask God to help the situation out, pray for them, and pray for us as well. Amen? Because I don't think anyone is, uh, let's say, escapes from this type of thinking, these type of motives that are hidden, deep, dark secrets. I don't think anybody escapes from that. You know, you could be the Pope, you could be the president, you could be the pastor, you could be the teacher, a prophet, apostle, evangelist. You know, whatever your office is, you could be wherever and doing whatever, amen, and you still may be dealing with deep, dark secrets that may be hidden from the public, but is never hidden from God. I'm going to say that again. God knows all things. Everything that we think, everything that we say, everything that we do, that we think is hidden in the dark, God, God, according to scripture, right, he will bring it to light. He will bring our darkest secrets to light and will reveal our private motives. He will do that. Amen. Unless, like I said, the person or the people allow you into their situation. Maybe they need to think things out with other people thinking with them. Uh, you know, the Bible says to get advice from wise counsel. You get that advice from people who are wise and you get good counsel from that. Unless they allow you in to their private motives, then we're not to judge. Stay away from from judging ahead of time before the Lord returns. Then God will give to each one whatever praise is due. So it might be a, a dark secret, but it might be actually something that's good. And God will, you know, give praise to those who do, whose praise is due. Amen. In other words, you might have something that for the world is dark and deep. You'd be like, uh, you know, you have motives. You have these hidden motives for what you want to do in the world. But you haven't got the word on it yet, or you're not sure if God wants you to do that. If it's helping and bringing people into the kingdom, I'm going to suggest that it's from God. But if it's hurting right people and taking people out of the kingdom, then that might be one of those deep, dark secrets that we need to stay away from. And we're passing judgment. You ever notice when you go around saying you're a Christian and people say, oh, um, I'm not religious. They're judging you by saying that you're a religious Christian, that you're a religious person. That's a judgment. I don't know if people realize they probably don't realize it because it happens to me all the time. I'm a Christian or I'm not into religion. So they actually judged me and said I was religious. I'm saying I'm a Christian. I have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one who died and rose again on the third day and who sent back the promised Holy Spirit and the spirit of God lives in every single person who says yes to the Lord and have a relationship with God, the father through the son by way of Holy Spirit. That's a relationship. Amen. But I know people always say, you know, I'm not into religion. And I, I kind of like raise my hand to us. I'm not into religion either. I, I really don't know a lot about religion. I, I'm trying to learn a lot about the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're not, if we're not to make judgments, what are we to do? Second question. What might be some motives hidden behind our judgments? And this the the, the judgments that we normally make as human beings, appearance. That's the first thing uh, a lot of people judge me and anybody else on, appearance. I've seen millionaires walking around with clothes that they probably got from a uh, clearance section at, um, you know, whatever, 
store, let's see, um, Coke Factory or something like that, or from Marshalls. They go to Marshalls, they're millionaires, multi-millionaires, they go to the clearance section and get those things. They, they don't want to be you know, no, noticed as a millionaire. They want to be under the radar. I'm all about that too. Amen. I got to be careful with trying to be under the radar a little bit too much, but I'm right with them. So by appearance, you might look at a person because of what they got on or how they dress, their makeup or whatever. You might pass a judgment, but you don't know the situation. You don't know where they came from, where they came out of, where they're going to. You don't know if they're millionaires or not. A lesson learned when I was, this was before I knew the Lord. I was young. I was a teenager and I used to work in this place, supermarket called D'Agostino's in Lower Manhattan in New York City. And um, there was this lady named Ginger. And Ginger was this lady that used to come with a whole bunch of cans because they used to get redeemed. Five cents per can used to get in New York City. I don't know what it is, probably 10 cents now, but if they're still doing it. She used to bring all these bags and guess who used to have to count them? Nine out of 10 times it would be me. Sam, here comes Ginger. You need to count those cans. And and you have to sort the cans out, bottles, cans, and all that, beer cans. So the, oh man, it was it was crazy. We had these bins. So Ginger was the nicest person, but she smelled like every single can she picked up from Manhattan. She smelled bad. She smelled like beer and soda. And that's not a good smell. And you know, here she comes with these big, large, oversized bags, and I'm counting them, counting them. And then she used to be like twenty five bucks, thirty bucks sometimes. That's how many cans she used to bring. And I said, okay, that's Ginger. So I already had a judge as a bum, a, a can, you know, collector in Manhattan. She's, you know, she used to dress the part as, you know, being out there. I thought she was homeless. One day I get, I used to also deliver the groceries. One day I get an order and I look at it. I said, wow, that's a nice, I think it was Waverly Place around there. Nice area, you know, for rich people. And it was the penthouse. So I was like, cool. I get to go into the elevator, go to the penthouse, and see what movie star I'm delivering to. Knock on the door, and I have all these groceries in my cart. And guess who comes to the door? Ginger, the can lady. I'm like, are you serious, Ginger? Because we had a good relationship by then. I said, are you serious? You're over here living in the penthouse in Manhattan, and you're rich, and you go collect cans. I said, why do you collect cans? She said, because I like to collect cans. I already had a judge as being homeless, whatever, whatever, and she was rich. Amen? And she gave me like a $25 tip that day or whatever. So every, after that, after I knew where she lived and how she was living, I, you know, I welcomed her the same way. Amen? Even though I didn't have Jesus in my heart and in my life at the time, I had some manners. I had some common sense, too. So I treated the same way. I I told very little people the situation. I think my boss at the time, my manager, knew that. So every time Ginger would come, he would leave and um, tell somebody to count the cans. Maybe he was like not understanding why she was still doing it. But I think he knew. He just didn't want to say nothing. I didn't want to say nothing either. But that was, I prejudged. I didn't know where she was coming from. I thought by her appearance that she was a can lady collecting cans for five cents a can, giving her $25. And then she would leave and, you know, scrounge for the rest of the night, try to find some place to rest or sleep. No, she lived in a penthouse in Manhattan, and she was rich. So sometimes we judge like that. We don't know the motives of why people do what they do, right? I don't know everybody's motives. I only know my motives, and sometimes my motives need to be checked. I don't, I don't know about you, but sometimes my motives need to be checked. That's why I don't move the way I used to move years and years ago. Amen. When Christ came into my life, started changing me, I had to readjust my whole attitude, my way of thinking, my way of looking at things, my way of speaking. Amen. And that was by choice. I allowed God to do that. I allowed God to take all my deep, dark secrets and put them out to the light. Amen. And I'm hoping you could do the same. Amen. You have probably deep, dark secrets. I probably have some. Everyone that I know probably has some deep, dark secrets that are hidden from people. Maybe it's because of shame, guilt, or past life experiences, consequences that you don't want to talk about anymore, soul ties, whatever the situation may be. But we have to understand that God sees all those deep, dark secrets. And um, God will give to each one whatever praises due. And on top of that, he will reveal our private motives. I don't know how God's going to reveal our private motives. Is he going to reveal that to the public or is he going to reveal that when we get to see him in glory? He's going to say, here, here it is. Everything that you said was hidden. I knew all about it. So let's talk about it. I don't know how he's going to do it. All I know is the scripture says that for he will bring our darkest secrets to light and 
will reveal our private motives. So that day is coming. Amen. So that's why a clear conscience is good to have. You know, set things right now before, you know, you go meet the Lord. Amen. And glory, because either way, you're going to get the praise due or the opposite applies. You're going to get uh, what's due to you based on your hidden agendas. So that's all I have for this morning. I hope it helps somebody out. I know it helped me. It's an eye opener for me. If we're not to make judgments, right, what are we to do? Because it looks like a contradiction in the scriptures, but it's obviously not a contradiction. We're not supposed to judge, Sam, Matthew chapter 6. Okay, but this scripture says, you know, we are not to judge ahead of time. Don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time. Amen. Before the Lord returns. So God is the judge of everybody outside of the Christian family. Everybody outside in the world, God is the judge. Amen. We're supposed to pray. We're supposed to show up in love, ready to pray, ready to share our faith. The reason why we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, ready to hear people out, ready to pray for people, lay hands and, you know, cast demons out in Jesus name, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We're supposed to be our kingdom about our family business, our kingdom business. And I worry about everything on um, the hidden agendas and the dark, deep secrets of this person and that person. Anyway, this culture is all about revealing all their deep, dark secrets. Anyway, they're public with it now. Everybody has their, you know, fists pumping out and saying, yeah, we're doing this. And, you know, love is love and all these um, movements going on. They're not afraid to come out with what their agenda is. They're actually blatantly telling us what they're doing for us and to us and to our kids and everything. They're blatantly saying it. So they're not hiding anything, basically. So why should Christians be hiding these deep, dark secrets? Amen. Tell somebody, confess your sins one to another. It might not be a deep, dark secret that's bad. It doesn't say a deep, dark secret is bad here in the scripture. It just says that the deep, darkest secrets will be revealed by the Lord. Amen. He knows them all. Some of those deep, dark secrets might not be bad. I'm telling you, I have some deep, dark secrets that I'm waiting for God to allow me to release into this world. Amen. And they're not bad. They're actually to help. But it would put me and my family probably in danger, amen, for doing what God, um, I think God is telling me to do, amen. But if it's going to bring me and my family in danger, I don't want to be selfish and be a, a zealot out there, you know, preaching um, this way and that way in front of people that despise and hate this message and get my family into any trouble. We have to come together in prayer. We have to come together in agreement as a family to make sure that that's the will of God for our lives, amen. Um, I'm hearing some things, but it's coming slowly, amen, and it's deep, dark, and it's a secret. Darkness means not all bad. Darkness means that it's out of the light of the public, amen. That's what darkness sometimes could mean, but it's, I'm not sure whether these deep, dark secrets are going to be bad secrets or good secrets or both, amen, but God says he will reveal our private motives, so that's the word on it. So God bless you. I hope you could hang out with me tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Lord willing, if I'm you know, able to do it live. That's someone is with a Z.org. Let me just show you the flyer. Amen, Sister Joanne. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Let me just show you the flyer. We started day one. This is day two. Tonight is day two of our Share Your Faith series. Go to djsamrock.com forward slash SYF. Sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up. When you sign up, you get the full experience of what this platform offers. Amen. And I'm excited about this platform. It works. It's just a lot of moving parts. <clears throat> and um, on there, you'll notice that I have a, a when we go live, you're going to notice on the notes. If you click the notes, there's a, a button for volunteers. And I'm going to see if I can recruit some people. Amen. To help the brother out to make this the greatest experience for people who don't know Christ and people who do know Christ. And we have a great experience together. Amen. So I'm hoping and praying for that. So God bless you. God keep you. Have a great day. Um, I'm, I'm going to be busy today, but I hope um, you understand that I'm not too busy to not be able to pray, to be able to be connected and contacted. Amen. I'm never too busy to reach out. Amen. So don't don't believe the hype. Oh, Sam is too busy. He's not going to be able to do this, that, and the third. I don't want to bother him. You're not a bother to me at all, at all, at all. Amen. And if you have it in your heart to sow a seed into his ministry, there's a website right on the screen, djsamrock.com forward slash donate. Or you could do djsamrock.com forward slash cash app. However you want to donate, one dollar, a million dollars. There's nothing too small, nothing too big to donate for this ministry to help me, help other ministries, and help other families as we grow in grace and we grow in the Lord together. Amen. I'm out. Peace. Have a great day.